I've been using chat GPT quite a lot to help me study for my uh, economics and sustainability management subject. Uh, and uh, I've been hard at it for the last two days, focusing on microeconomics. And I just wanted to demonstrate and share how I'm using it. So in the last video, I shared how I do my research, which is, you know, to start off with some easy prompts. Uh, Chat GPT educate me on uh, the basics of uh, sustainable economics, uh, and and zooming down to more questions after that, and finally ending with. Uh, give me a, a quiz, a ten uh, of ten questions, uh, which includes multiple choice, fill in the blanks, or true or false statements. And it did that. Uh, so if you want to see that video, uh, it's in my uh, video list. So today, I am going to. I'm about to finish uh, all of my uh, study of uh, microeconomics in sustainability management, uh, and I want to move on to macroeconomics. Uh, but I thought I would uh, test myself and uh, and treat this as a proper uh, uh, test environment. So I am going to, let's see, what, let's show you what I mean. I am going to ask ChatGPT to develop uh, 30, uh, 50 questions, uh, which I must complete in 30 minutes. Uh, these uh, questions will include multiple choice, fill in the blanks, true or false statement, uh, and uh, I will do my own timing. Uh, but I'm going to submit to Chat GPT uh, my answers, uh, and then so I can gauge whether I've really understood uh, what I have learned. Right. So I, I this is the first time I've done it. This is the first time I've asked it to to develop. Uh, 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 a 50 questions test maybe I'm being a bit um, a bit uh, ambitious to be to wanting to do it in 30 minutes but let's see how we do So this is what it says. As an AI language model, I am unable to track the time taken for you to complete the test. However, I have prepared 50 questions for you. Feel free to time yourself and submit your answers when you're ready. Good luck. Thank you, Chat GPT. So it's going to take a while for it to generate the questions. Uh, and I think this is... I, I was just uh, sharing my experience with some friends uh, yesterday and they uh, are quite uh, uh, taken aback uh, and uh, impressed with what chat GPT can do some of them have even told me that you know they, they are you know their children are in schools and the parents uh, whatsapp group at the schools are all um, a buzz about the danger of chat GPT uh, and my response to my friends were that you know uh, th th this is this is the most leading edge technology that is available to your children at the moment uh, and uh, we shouldn't be scared of uh, how it's going to impact our child's learning we should actually think about you know how can we uh, use this to supplement the way the children learn. Now, I think if uh, schools were to insist on doing things in the traditional way, uh, like testing and exams and trying to ban chat GPT or any other AI for that matter, it's actually not going to help the, the kids simply because it's about us teaching uh, children, the best way for them to uh, to use technology. Uh, okay, so I'm just it has stalled, so I'm just going to ask it to continue. Right, so uh, we have to find ways and help students at any level take advantage of AI. Now. The big difference that happened 
the big difference between how I'm studying now and how I studied when I did my law degree 30 years ago was that, you know, the, the, uh, 30 years ago, uh, the internet wasn't there and Google wasn't there. There's no search engine and all the studies were, were based primarily on uh, textbooks, case books and whatever is in the library. That was the knowledge that we had access to. Uh, and then when the internet came out and the age of uh, information technology really took off, uh, I was uh, at that time already working. And, you know, being able to use uh, search engines like Yahoo at that time or, or Google uh, or internet, uh, or Yahoo or Google, and it, it really made a difference in terms of the research. Uh, so, you know, whereas before, knowledge was very, or access to knowledge was very limited. With Google and the internet, uh, uh, access to knowledge became a lot more uh, easier. It, it, knowledge was pervasive. Knowledge was not expensive anymore. Uh, and now, w uh, what I'm feeling is, with AI and ChatGPT, knowledge has suddenly become this completely decommon. Uh, Decommoditized. No, knowledge has suddenly become commoditized. Everybody has access to the same knowledge now. Everybody has access to things like uh, AI and Chat GPT. Sure, there are differences between uh, the premium paid version of Chat GPT and the free version of Chat GPT. But you know the 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 amount that you pay is very negligible. So everybody has access to AI. Which means when you have access to AI, you have access to a system that accesses all knowledge or knowledge that has been given to it and be able to pick things out according to how you structure your questions and give it to you on a plate. Now, it doesn't mean that that knowledge is 100% foolproof. Uh, you know, that there are some things that that I see, you know, that, that, that I find, you know, it's not, this, this doesn't seem right. And I will actually ask ChatGPT, can you double check what you've just said? And sometimes it will come and say, I apologize, uh, 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 there was an error, this is actually what's happening. <coughs> so people will say, ah, ChatGPT was wrong. But I, my counter to that would be, hey, we can't say that all the teachers were right all the time. And and if, if we find that a teacher was incorrect in a, something that they had mentioned, does that mean that we're not going to use them at all? No. As I've said in the last video, chat GPT is like your very own personal tutor who doesn't sleep, who doesn't drink, who doesn't tire, who is very patient, who has access to more knowledge than you can ever dream of, uh, and who, 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 who is relentless in answering the questions that you ask. The only thing you need to make sure is that you ask the right question and you, you, you have to be uh, uh, precise in the question. And actually, if you really think about it, that's, that's part of critical thinking, being able to ask the right question. All right, so now uh, ChatGPT has generated 50 questions. I am going to quickly go and um, uh, make a cup of coffee and then I'm going to time myself and, uh, and do the questions. Be back in a minute. All right, so uh, I am going to now switch to my obsidian. So, okay. Hey, give me a 30 minute timer. 30 minutes starting now. Thank you. Uh, so I'm not gonna bore you with me doing this. I'm going to record this and then speed it up like a million times. And you know, probably in about a minute, after watching me do all that, I'm going to come back to you and we're going to see how I do and uh, I'm going to submit my uh, my
my uh, answers to chat GPT and see how I did. which admittedly was not something that I've covered but you know I've made a best guess out of it so I have answered the question some heat market and reverse and highlight highlight Here we go. Thirty-six out of fifty questions correct. That is seventy-two uh, percent. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Could you now uh, educate me on the questions I got wrong and? Create a similar test with only twenty questions. The amazing thing about this is that I'm, I'm learning at my own pace. Uh, I can um, go in and, uh, and go into greater detail for things that I want to go into greater detail. Uh, and, uh, you know, as a way of uh, introducing me to a subject, as a way of trying to understand 
the overview of the subject this is brilliant actually so i can't stop thinking the same so i'm going to do another 20 questions and then after that i'm going to start on macroeconomics so that's me and chat gpt uh, so here's a tip if you want to learn something through chat gpt you just ask it use a prompt uh, i use the, the normal prompt that i use which i'll put in the description below is you know did educate me on the following subject uh, giving me an overview of the uh, key points uh, the issues and challenges arguments for and against uh, as well as any other things that you need uh, that you think i need to understand I press enter it will give me a lot of it and then you can add uh, please uh, also develop um, a, a quiz or a test for me using multiple choice fill in the blanks or a true and false statement uh, and that's it and and keep doing it it's it's an iterative process and and the, it, it it gets you into this active learning uh, situation where you know you, 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 your, our brain is very geared and trying to answer questions and and that's the amazing thing about it is its ability to ask me questions to check my knowledge uh, and, and you know and, and that and that learning passive learning is just trying to 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 get trying to uh, absorb information without any real use for it e e reading the information knowing that i have to answer a question in a minute is the active part of learning all right so that's my video for today uh, i'll see you in the next video thanks